Mimosas with Michael. Mimosas with Michael. Mimosas with Michael. Yay! Everybody, it's Michael Colomb with Mimosas with Michael. And so um, I know I say this every week because I always have a special guest. But this week, I have the most special guest because this is one of my really good friends. Well, his name is Leonidas Galoptis, but you just go by Leon, mostly. Yeah. And uh, he's this really awesome Greek guy from Australia that I met in Northern California on a movie. But he lived here in Los Angeles, but now, in, now in, you're in New York. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, wow, what a welcome. Thank you. I know. I, I think that's everything. I'm sure, I mean, bro, we've known each other for a good while, but I was trying to remember all the all the little juicy nuggets about our friendship. Because we have a, a really awesome friendship, so I'm, just, I'm just like beyond excited to have you on the show. You don't even know. Oh, thank you, man. Like, so professional. I love seeing you like this, too, in this world. It's so weird, because you, it is weird, because you, you really only know me as a script revisor when we worked together. Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, we, um, we were going to do that short a while ago in L.A., um, and then I was thinking about, remember, do you remember the last day we filmed um, The Answer, how you and I um, rode back together in the van, like we had to drop the van back? Oh, my God, I forgot about that, yeah. Yeah, because it was, um, I wanted to get back to LA because it was, you know, we were up there for a month. And, and that, was was just, a, that was a long, it was so hot then. It was stinking hot, so dry. And I mean, it was beautiful, but it's just like, I, on your days off, there's not much you can really do, is there? And especially if yeah. you didn't have a car, you kind of stuck in that little town. Um, and I just remember when we like wrapped, um, most people were going back the next day and I'm just like, look, I want to head back to LA now, like tonight yeah. after we finished. And I think you, and you and I drove back, um, cause you were like, I'll, I want to go too. Well, I didn't, and, and I also didn't want you to drive by yourself. Do you remember oh, that? No, that was so sweet. I know you were so sweet. And I was thinking about, I'm like, you poor dude, you probably didn't even want to go. You're just like, I can't let him drive back. He's <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't remember. No, I don't, I don't, don't mind. Cause here's the thing. You and I. We got along so well on uh, on that movie. We, we we were so close because we spent so much time together. Yeah. But then, like you and I, even on the days off, would still go and do things because, yeah. like, sometimes we went with um, Natalie. Uh, Natalie, yeah, we would go yeah. to town with Natalie. But I remember, and I know. Do you remember the day that we stole the golf cart during production and we were just driving around? Wait, was I part of that? Yeah. You, what do you mean? Your probably was your idea. Oh, I don't even remember that. That's you're terrible. like Michael. Michael, let's just take. It was. Uh, was it Pavel's? I think it was his. Yeah, the director. I don't remember. I just remember we having this damn golf cart, and you and I, I don't know, because I think the director, like, we were just so close, and we were always with the director, and you and I, and I don't normally bond with actors as much because I spend so much time with the crew, but I right. think just you and I, for some odd reason, bond really well. Yeah. No, we got along very well. Yeah. And I just remember we, we I say we, but it was your idea, but I was a cohort. <laughs> Most of the time, do something because you're like, I'm not going down alone, going with you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but they don't. They would never punish the actor. They would always punish the crew, which they never did. But yeah, we yeah. stole that damn. You don't remember stealing that golf cart? No, that's oh, so funny. That's so I funny. had a video of it for years, and I thought it was really funny. Oh, jeez. It was just you and I. I mean, we didn't do anything bad. We just, I think it was just we were in between setups. You're like, Michael, Michael, come here. We just jumped in and just drove around. <laughs> we were we were oh, trouble yeah. with that one. Can you believe how, like, that was seven years ago? No. I was, well, that's been a long time since I've seen you then. No, no, because I, I saw you after that when we were, um, we were like, going to do a short. And we hung out um, a couple of times. But as, like, you know, now I live in New York, it's a lot of, it's obviously a bit more difficult. Yeah. and But how long have you been in New York, though? Like, five years, right? Four years? Yeah. No, four and a half. Four and a half. Four Jeez. years. Yeah. Has it really been that long? Yeah. I've nearly been here just as long as I was in L.A. Oh my god! Well, before I ask you, how's your mother? <laughs> I love Vicky. <laughs> she she always says you comment on her stuff as well. It's really nice. It's I so love nice. your mom. Well, you have to. Remember, I just remember, I just remember having this amazing conversation with your mother when I met her about um, you because she was like a little uncertain about you being an actor because she just didn't know anything about it. Yeah. And I think I think just like I I. I promised her I would always keep you grounded. <laughs> so, no, her, her Vicky, thing is, I, I'm sorry. I hope I kept that promise. 
<laughs> She'll watch this too. Yeah, I know she will. Well, I just well, good. I don't. You don't have to give her my love. I will give her my love, Vicky. I. It was so great meeting you, and I hope you're doing well. Oh, uh, that's very. She'll love that. She no her her thing is like oh. He does acting, so he must be on drugs because they do drugs. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't do drugs at all. Like, what are you talking about? Only on camera. Yeah, only it's if you have to. A, yeah, it's just um, it's. I mean, look, it's a, just a different world, I suppose, as you know. When I started in the industry, I had to explain to my mom too, like, well, I, 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 it's just not like a normal job. People don't realize like what it takes to to really be a filmmaker or an artist. Mm-hmm especially when you freelance. So it's a little, yeah, it's like, how do you explain? It's just not something they're not used to. Right. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And especially like, cause it's creatives. It's like you're using a different part of the brain. I think it was, um, I was listening to it on Rogan, I think. And he was talking with Post Malone and they're yeah. talking about, you know, like some of the, some of the people who do like, if they have to use alcohol or smoke weed or other things to try and open up your endorphins where you can just create and there's no judgment. And sometimes I can yeah. start, I, I mean, look, I understand like when you drink, it just relaxes you and then you can just write or, and, and everyone's different, you know, like even with making music and stuff, I think it's just whatever you can use to channel and get into that kind of mindset that helps you. I think that's a, I mean, yeah, it's I'm all for whatever gets you the best juices, you know, if you're not hurting yourself or anyone else. You, yeah. Like I love drinking <laughs> as you know. <laughs> But like I don't, I don't usually drink to be creative. Like I yeah. don't need it. It's yeah. So I, but it's, I have heard of that. Like I don't know. Everybody, like you said, everybody's different. But I'm not that. I've never been that guy. The coffee's mine. It's oh like, my god! I'm drinking. I'm on a podcast called Mimosas with Michael, but I'm drinking coffee. I was going to say that. I was thinking, wait, are we doing mimosas? Because I'm, I'm having coconut water. <laughs> Terrible. Well, when I, when I originally did the podcast, I originally I had it in person. Yes, we always had mimosas and we clink glasses, but. COVID, so I can't do that right now. Right. But I like this because um, I should I should have – next time I have you on the show, I'll coordinate it better where, like, I'll send you some, like, champagne and we can, like, have mimosas together. Yeah, that will be great. One of these days I'm hoping to have, like a, like, a, like, a champagne sponsor, and then I can just send my guests champagne and we can, like, actually talk about it on the air. That will be so good. How long have you been doing this for? This is my third year. Jeez. Which is weird because – like it, it, I mean, it's been a sporadic thing because when I first started it, I did it at my friend's house and we kind of just recorded it together. And then for a while I was doing it at another friend's house because he had like a whole podcast set up. So um, I could actually have people in because it was like in his guest house. So we would just, I'd be in the back and right. people would just come through the gate and I would just actually, and I could do three or four at a time. It was really nice. Oh, really? Had, so you just pump them out? Well, I w- at that time I was only doing it every, I was doing it every two weeks, but now- right. Now, during COVID, and I can do everything kind of like – because I'm at home doing nothing, and it's, I can do it online, I just do it every week. Yeah. And um, it's only because now – like, for instance, you just had a movie come out, and it's like if I – it's I'm already like – I schedule a couple of weeks in advance. Right. So what I'm doing as of um, – so this is I, – I, okay, I record in advance, but as of the 1st of August, I'm going to start doing Instagram live as well. So, oh, like, nice. if you're like, Michael, I want to promote my movie this – this week, I can just have it on Instagram live. We can do a really quick 20 minute like, interview kind of thing. Yeah. And then, what's so great about Instagram live is it stays live for 24 hours, but then oh, you can no. push it, it'll save it to Instagram TV. So then, from Instagram TV, we can promote it from there. Jeez. Yeah. I love so, you know all this. Look, I mean, I, I spend a lot of time just reading and studying because you kind of have to, like, you just have to understand I'm, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a writer, I'm a director, I'm a podcaster. I, I just took up photography this year. So it's like I learned all these things to keep myself. Yeah, I, I clearly get bored and I just have to keep doing shit. <laughs> no, I remember you, you're like, you can't sit still. You're always like this. And it doesn't help that I drink so much coffee. Oh, I, I'm the same, man. It just, and that's what, that's my juices that gets me going. As soon as I smell that coffee, I'm just like, ping. Dumb. Man, it is, it is, I'm not going to lie. It's so good to see you. It's been way, way too long. I know. Yeah. And like I was, I was saying before, honestly, you have not changed a bit. No, but I don't know what moisturizer you use. I don't. It's it's filters. No, I don't. It's like I, I just have like a plain wall. I don't know. It's like I don't know. You know what it is? It's I have a small camera. <laughs> no, nah, it looks great. I don't know. I'm in the same place. When I saw you, like seven. Have you moved like the last? Seven yeah, years? I'm in a different place now. Where and so I have a. And it's really funny because I need to. Little by little, I'm creating this little podcast corner because I never expected to do it. Right. I usually record outside because there's like a nice. Um, 
the gra- like, but it's so hot. So I've been doing it like in my room in the corner. So that's why it's like I have pictures here, like my. But it's little by little I'm getting there. Every once in a while I'll, I'll throw a plant up there. But yeah, really people come to watch the guests, so really they're gonna look at you. <laughs> no, i well. I think but. But I mean, it's eventually I'm gonna get a backdrop and stuff. But no, I, uh, it, great. I love that. Yeah, it's like um, it reminds me of Seinfeld where he's got the Superman in every episode. You've got your little dude over there, whatever, whoever he well, is. Th- that's Edgar Allan Poe. Who? Edgar Allan Poe, the writer. Oh, wow. This is a painting I I bought, and then this is a, um this is a lamp. Oh, it, this is really cool. So I turn this on. If you make it dark, but see it turns red, and it's Friday the Thirteenth. Oh, of course, you love the horror. Yeah, and then this is uh, this is kind of like a horror version of um, of um, the Wizard of Oz. This yeah, I love my bad, This is how bad my eyes are. I literally thought that was a, a man. <laughs> this is a man. No, next to it. Oh, this. Yeah, I thought that was a man. Oh no, it's a little <laughs> lamp. I thought it was a man with a top hat. I'm just like my. Oh eye, no, so it's just a, it's just a gothic looking. It's like a pipe. I don't know. It's whatever. I buy this random horror stuff. So, it's really because this is a TV, so I'm trying to like block the TV, so it looks like I actually care. And and are you in um? Where were you? Were you, you were in Silver Lake, were you last time? I was in Atwater Village. Atwater, and where? No, are you now? I'm in Van Nuys. I'm like in the valley. You're in Van Nuys. Yeah, it's great until like right now when it's 105 degrees today. So it's so hot here as well. But like, it's, it's boiling. But I did, they were so the place I was living at was getting remodeled, so I needed to move out for a while, and I came to live at my friend's guest house. I'm uh, not guest house, um, townhouse, and I loved it. It's great. So I just I ended up staying. So <laughs> because you, you know, like I said, I travel so much for work. Like like when we did our movie, I was you know you leave for like five weeks. I know. So I was like, I just like having a place because then all my stuff is watched while I'm, it's just like, right. Just keep an eye on it. My car is here. So it's whatever. I, and are you, um, is everything on pause for you right now in LA as far as work wise? I ended up getting, so my writing partner and I ended up hi- getting hired to write a couple of scripts. So yeah. I could work from home, which is nice. I did do a Buzzfeed job and that was kind of cool because, um, that particular job I could do from home. Mm. Right. Like they just, I just use my computer and they set it up. But, um, then about maybe a month ago, I ended up doing, uh, uh, two commercials for dish network and I was on set and it was like, so COVID compliant. It was so safe, but I actually, um, am starting up a project soon. So work is slowly starting to pick up. And with the, with the, um, project that you said that was like, so COVID compliant, was that, well, like, I mean, I know they've got to do that, but was it also a bit of a nightmare where you're just like, it's 30 minutes to go through checkpoints just to get the set? Uh, I, you know, what's interesting is they, they staggered our call times. Like, I came in so late compared to, like, everybody else. By the time I went through, I was probably one of maybe three people. Right. So I just went in. Oh, the thing that was difficult is I ended up replacing somebody at the last minute, so they didn't have my name on the paper. So that longest actually was trying to find out, like, that I was legit the person supposed to be there. But they took they took my temperature. They gave me a wristband. It was a different color. So, like, my specific color told me I could be on set. Right. But even when I got to set, um, I couldn't even go to set. Like, I was still – they're like, they had me back at tables just to sit there. And then once they built my video village, I went into my video village. I was pretty much self-contained the whole time. And then I couldn't even go to set until most of, like – because all the grips and the, and the electrics were there setting up. So I had to wait until they were done. Right. And, and then they all had masks on and everything? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah and I, they actually gave me a mask too because I was on set. So I wasn't even allowed to wear I – I had to wear an N95 mask provided by production. Right. And, yeah, it was actually very, very good because the actors – so the actors had to get tested because they could be next to each other. But then I remember, like, a wardrobe girl came on set, and, like, she was about to touch, just, like, tighten up, like, her, like the actress's shirt, like, not even anywhere near her face. And the, the compliance officer was like, you got to have gloves. Like, you can't go anywhere near them. Right. It's more, especially the actors, because you guys have to take your masks off. Yeah. In between, in between setups, so the, the – if you weren't taken to your room, the actors could have the option to put their masks back on. Right. Um, which some did, some didn't. Uh, but then there was also an area like of tables where if, if someone wanted to go and rest, like I've like, if I just had my mask on for three hours, I could go over there, take it off for like a couple of minutes and kind of breathe. And, 
but I was away from people. And then even at the tables, you saw me just, so I actually, nothing about it bothered me. I never once felt unsafe. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they're going to be on, they're going to be on it. Like it's so professional, you know? Yeah. Without a doubt. Um, I think that, um, I mean, look, whatever gets us back to work. Well, it's exciting to, to, to be a, I mean, that's not exciting. I'm excited to get back to work, but it is going to be interesting to kind of figure out where we go from here. Yeah. I think you know, the rest of the world, everyone's like that, you know, like how can yeah. we navigate through this? I think, I mean, I don't know. I think it's going to take until we find a vaccine for us to kind of go back to somewhat of what it used to be, I suppose, if, if we're going to go back to that world. Well, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's interesting for, to like, to be so, so safe like i even when i go get the mail i put my mask on like because i just pass by a neighbor like i try to be so respectful yeah but then you hear about those people that just like won't wear a mask and they just fall apart because they're asked to wear a mask and it yeah. it's like a strange strange thing to watch these people because you're like really like it's, it's such a simple thing yeah and like it's i get it i mean i guess i mean i try to get it that people don't want the government to tell them what to do but at the same time it's like why can't you just be safe like it's such a weird yeah, like it's like what, 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 like what skin off your nose or, you know. Just yeah, but then, but then it's true. But then you see those, those memes where people go, you don't, you don't want the government to tell you what to do by wearing a mask, but you go in a car and you put on your seatbelt and like all, you know, there's other things that the government tells you to be safe to do yeah. that you have no problem doing. But why is the mask like the, the hill you want to die on? Yeah. Like literally. Yeah. It's a strange thing, but, but at the same time, it's like I, I have so many people around me who have gotten sick. Some have gotten really – like I had a friend who – it was his birthday, and I just wished – I reached out to him, and I said, happy birthday. How are you feeling? He goes, I'm good. He goes, I just got over being – having COVID, and I said, holy shit. Like what was that like? And he goes, I'm going to tell you, man. He goes, it's hell. <clears throat> he goes, I've been sick for a month. He goes, I have scar tissue on my lungs. He goes, there was a point where it was so bad I was in the ER. I couldn't even breathe. He goes, yeah. I had chills, sweats. He goes, it was horrible. I couldn't breathe. And he goes, my fever was 104. And he goes, and the worst part is you're in the hospital completely isolated and alone. I've, I, I heard the same thing, man. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, how can, how can people not take that seriously? My friend told me the same thing where um, I think he was seeing a girl who was a nurse. And she said, like, it is the most saddest, depressing thing that – and even like, you know, if you die from it, it's, it's yeah, that's it. because you're sitting there on your own. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, that's horrendous. Yeah. I hear stories all the time of people. And that's the thing. It's like, you're just dying alone. And like, there's nobody there, maybe a nurse to hold your hand. But like, and I've heard some people like over FaceTime have to wa watch their loved one die. Like it's, it's so heartbreaking. But then you see those people like, oh, I don't want to wear a fucking mask. And you're just like, it's like, why? And I took this seriously because back, I want to say 2007. Uh, my sister was one of the first reported cases of the swine flu, the H1N1, in Orange County, right? And like COVID is probably, I don't know how much, but I feel like it's 10 times worse because it's, it's definitely much more easily contractable than like swine flu was. Yeah. And my sister almost died. She was in a coma for a month trying to fight it. And that wasn't even as bad. So when, when we found out this was so bad, I was like, yeah, like we had to take this seriously. So, Jeez. And she's okay now? Oh yeah, she's fine. But I'm, but she, but when she came out of the tone, I mean, she even said she had to like relearn how to walk again. Like it was just, it just was a horrible thing. And I remember like, we were at that time we were probably in our mid, early to mid thirties, and like just watching your sister, yeah, be so frail like that is just like. And remember, we're twins. Yeah, we're yeah. So it's just like what I just remember like, the doctor coming up to my mom telling her that we might want to start thinking of funeral arrangements and like i just remember my mother going weak and i had a whole like catch my mom from falling like that's something i never wanted to do with in my 30s you know oh. so people who don't take this seriously like it really breaks my heart yeah breaks my heart Jeez. oh god we are so depressing we have to move on i'm anyway, um, happy sunday <laughs> i know <laughs> so tell me about your new movie because you had a movie coming out and i was like okay we got to talk about it but yeah, then so we got it came out July seventeenth, um, and it was on. Uh, so it's on Apple TV, iTunes, Amazon, Vudu, Fandango, um, on like on demand. And yeah. I believe this month it's going to go international. Um, to be really cool, and I think um, so. Vicky can see it in Australia. Yeah, I know. Which is like, when am I going to get to see this? But yeah, so it um, so it basically it's uh, yeah, it's called A Nice Girl Like You. So it's based on um, the book Pornology by Anne Gailey, and it was 
adapted into a screenplay by Andrea Marcellus. Okay. So it follows Lucy Nell, who's played by Lucy Hale, who gets labelled um, pornophobic from her boyfriend. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so she goes on this mission to prove him wrong, to, like, to do 12, um, like a sex to-do list, like a list of 12 things that she does. Okay. She, she meets my character... Um, along the way and I kind of get wrapped up into this world and um, it's a funny you know it's a, it's a cute funny uh, romantic comedy oh my god it sounds awesome I actually met Lucy Hale once I was doing um, some CW promos when she was doing Katie Keene oh right that's yeah. silly then yeah it was like last year I don't yeah. remember Within, was that in New York or here no it was here it oh, was no. here yeah they're doing them here I think she was in for, but, but it was weird because I actually like that day we were doing that show, I knew like three of the people, like three of the actors I knew because I, you know, of just people I've worked with over the years. So it was because they did all their CW shows. It was so great to see all my, like, I love when people are doing well. Yeah. So, um, I mean, your list of IMDb of your credits, I'm just like, it's, I know it's, it's crazy. People are like, why are you single? I'm like, Oh, here, let me show you my IMDb page. <laughs> like, I'm just, all they do is work. <laughs> because you know me, I can't sit still. I get bored. Someone, someone's like, you want to work on a project? I'm like, yeah, let's just go. Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh well, but, but thank you. It doesn't matter. I'm in. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically true. Of what you said is basically true. But I've been blessed because, and I meet really cool people like you, who who I have such amazingly fond memories with, and then I get to have you on my podcast. Man, I'm I was wrapped. I was so like when you reached out, I'm like that'd be really cool. I don't even know why I didn't think of that. I don't know. Why I didn't think of it either. And then you started posting, and I was like. Why isn't I have Leah? But you know the weird thing is, is I ask people all the time, but then I get so busy filming that sometimes it's like I have to keep pushing it. And then finally, like a month and a half ago, by I'm like, you want to do the podcast now? They're like, oh, I guess you're always yeah. so busy. And I'm like, sorry. It's like, have you have you found because like obviously your like filming obviously must be number one in your life. Like that's obviously the thing your passion right is is creating. yeah, filming so, and writing yeah. And have you found like doing the podcast has that been kind of like obviously enjoyable, but has it ever been where it's like, Oh, I've got to do the podcast because you have so much on your plate. Uh, you know what it is? It's not, it's not the recording itself. It's the editing because, yeah. um, I have, I listen to the whole thing and I take notes. So I know how to promote that podcast. And I have to listen to it again and make sure it turns out good. So, yeah. uh, sometimes that's the hardest part because, um, I'll be, it's like, I have to do it while I'm doing other things. I mean, yeah. it's not like it's difficult. It's really not. None of it's difficult. It's just all like, it's a 30 minute podcast, sometimes a little longer. So it's 30 minutes and then I have to export it. And now I export it as both audio and then video. Right. And then I have to upload it. So I have to upload it to the podcast page and then the YouTube page. And now I'm doing it on Instagram. So I just upload it. But once they're uploaded, I schedule everything. So then it's just, it just all goes out on its own. Right. right. So, um, but the good thing is, is this is why I upgraded to a new computer because I can do a lot of this while I'm on set because let's like say we're at lunch and or in between in between things i could just set it off to the side and upload it you know i i do a lot mobily now yeah but I, that's why i pay like i i always upgrade i'll i'm such a huge techie so if, like, if something new comes out i'll probably get it because of moments like this yeah. but you know the the cool thing is is i have recorded the podcast sitting in a hotel room on like i did this movie uh, a couple years ago in massachusetts and I, I interviewed this guy who did a horror book in like Indianapolis and I interviewed him from my hotel room. That's about, before I did, that was just audio back then, but I just recorded it on my phone. And then I, uh, like one night we were off and I just uh, like edited it in my hotel room. Um, I did, a, um, like I was saying before, I did a table read on Monday um, from a script I've written. That's and, so amazing. Um, we, we, um, fil so we filmed it and um, like the guy sent me the, you know, the, the, the recording Okay. And I put and I put it on for two seconds, and I just hear my voice, and I'm just like, oh, turn it off. Like I can't, so I yeah. can't bear to hear my voice. Like it just it drives me crazy. I'm like, shut up, like to myself. So like when you record it, I'm just like, I don't. For me personally, I'll be like, oh, I just can't listen to myself. Well, and that's the thing is, I'll listen to the podcast, and then my first thought is not my voice because I I'm so used to hearing it now, but it's more like I never shut up like i feel like i talk so much yeah it's so isn't that so funny yeah it's and then some podcasts i talk less and then some i talk more but it's only because well one i'm just naturally talkative but two it's like i don't i know people don't like they want to hear your story but what's great is like our sort of banter 
Yeah. Like I had a friend on a couple of week, a couple of months, a couple of weeks ago, and it was just like you. Like I hadn't seen him in a few years, and we met on a movie up in Montana, and it was like most of the conversation was just us catching up. <laughs> it was right. nothing that exciting. <laughs> um, but it's my friend Brent. He does. He's the Shell guy. Like if you go to Shell and you see that like that poster, that guy in right. the suit, that, that's him. Right. And so, but I knew him for years, and he was just an actor. Like he's just a, my friend. Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. well, I guess we could talk about that Shell thing you did since you're on the air. <laughs> But we're no, also catching up, so that's why. No, but I, I know exactly what you mean. And um, look at me; I feel like I'm self-promoting. I promise you, I'm not. No, uh, but this is what. Please self-promote. That's why I have I you on the show. I, I, no, but this is like how I learn as well because I am like I was saying before too. So I've got this TV show that I've created with my brother, and I'm like close to selling. Um, yes. It's a doc- documentary adventure. It's kind of um, it's about two best friends who travel the world to the most exotic coffee plantations and communities on the planet, and they okay. do it on they do it on motorbikes. So it's kind of, and I don't, Wait, like, have you told me about this before? I don't think so because you know, this is how bad it sounds because I don't know if I've spoken to you. Like, has it been two years? Cause we did this in the last two years. That's um, how, I don't know. Okay. Maybe not that. I feel like you mentioned something similar when we worked together. You definitely no, want to do something travel related. I feel like. Yeah, it wasn't this. Okay. Um, then never mind. I'll shut I, up I, again. When you go through the edit and, and you hear yourself, I'm just like, Oh, just, I talk so much. And this is what I'm learning as, because I, I predominantly come from a film um, backgrounds so where, where it's scripted and non-scripted where you're kind of, I suppose, a host um, and you're like listening and talking to people. I've got to realize that like, you know, we're trying to hear their story and it's okay to have dead air because you can edit it. Obviously not on a podcast um, because it's just live or it's, this is the recording you're showing, but yeah. when you like interviewing and t- speaking, it's okay to have dead air. And I was always like, I felt like I had to fill the gaps just to keep the conversation flowing. And then yeah. what happens is you just get you going like this and you're just like, you know, shut up. <laughs> What also what I found was I have a tendency to tell the same, like I, my poor listeners, but, but I, because I'm always relating to what the other person is saying and it somehow relates to a story. And I'm like, I keep telling the same story. Like my, my listeners get it. They know my story and I go to other podcasts and I tell my, so I sometimes just have to stop and realize like, it's okay to let the other person talk. Yeah. No, I'm the same. I'm like, well, should we do a 30 second, just no talk? God, no, God I don't like, <laughs> what are we just look at each other? Make it awkward. Well, the cool thing is you also have that really awesome accent. I don't have an accent, so. Ah, uh, mate, you hang long enough, you get sick of it. That's true, yeah. I know, I, I, worked with you, I worked with you for a month. My favorite part of that whole movie was, like, I always had to make sure you didn't sound Australian. Oh, I know. I remember you come up one day, you're like, no, no, you got to say it like this. I, before I forget, you know the funniest thing? I will never, every time I hear that song, I think of you every single time. Do you know what it is? No, you think of, there's a song you think that there's we a, would. I'm not joking. There's a song that I hear still today, seven years later, and I think of you straight away because you you sang it on set and you were filming something just like. Oh my god! Please don't tell me what I already know where this is going. <laughs> Do you know the song? Is it going to be Shania Twain? I feel like a woman. No, no. But, the, I, uh, but there's a story with that too. But what's the song you're thinking of? It's that. I want to know what love is. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean that song? Yeah, you were filming it one day on set as a joke on your camera and you were turning around and that song played and I cannot get that song out of my... Every time I hear it, I think of that moment at, um, up in Nevada. That's amazing. That's a story I don't remember. Uh, we're like the golf cart. Maybe it was the same day. <laughs> we both blocked it out. But wait, do you remember, You don't remember the, the Shania Twain at Man I Feel Like a Woman? Please tell your member of the story. I know it has to be with you. Oh my God, I hope I'm going to tell a story that didn't happen to somebody else. But I remember we going into town and we went to this bar that had karaoke. It was like a biker bar. Please tell me you remember this. Yeah, I think, I'm, I, think I may, but... Oh my God. And I wanted to sing. Remember? Do you remember this? I think... I, yeah, but I don't... Was I there? Because I do remember something like this and I don't know if I was yes, there. Yes, because I think you took the video. Anyways. Anyways. Terrible. Oh my God, I know. Well, this is seven years ago. I, okay, dear God, I hope this was this. But the, the, the story is this. I wanted to do karaoke. We went into town, and there was this bar. I, I don't know if it was a biker bar, but it definitely wasn't like a normal bar I would go into. I think, I know, I, think I know the bar. I know being it, yeah. a gay guy. And we all walked in, and I was like, I want to do karaoke. And they're like, no, you can't because um, it's all full. Because we went in kind of late. And they're like, oh, no, it, it's all full up. I was like, no, no, no. I can sing. It's fine. I grew up being a singer. It'll be worth it. Like, I just want to sing because we were drunk. Right? And they're like, no, 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 you can't because, um, because it's all full. I was like, God damn it! So I remember like just being mad, and we were off in the corner drinking, and then all of a sudden, someone was like calling somebody to sing Shania Twain's "Man, I Feel Like a Woman," but I guess that person had laughed, 
and you're like, mate, do you know Shania Twain's man? I feel like a woman. I was like, fuck yeah, I do. I'm gonna, and so I, and I remember like singing the song. I was so drunk in front of this like bar full of like biker guys. I remember like sitting on the counter singing. You don't remember any of it? There's a video of it. And I think you took it. Jeez. And I can't believe I just mentioned that on the air, but it was like, I was just like, we were having so much fun. Because, you know, we worked so hard and it was just like we went out and played. And, and I was know, like, I, I didn't do remember that bar though. Like, I do remember, like, I, I was the same. Like, you walk in and you're like, you boys aren't from around here, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, gave it away. <laughs> my Australian <laughs> accent or my gay best friend over here. <laughs> it was, um, I just remember that, man. It was like, and I just, because it was like one of those things where I think the video played over and over and over on set. The other video, and it pops up on my Facebook feed all the time is, you know, there was like that small stint where in the middle of the movie, I moved to that, that house on the location yeah. and stayed with some of the crew members. Uh, when they, were, was, they were on campfires and they were having a great time. There's a bit of me that's like, damn it, I should have gone up there too. I, it was really awesome, man. It was so, it was just nice. And chill, because they partied at the hotel so much, so it was very chill. But I remember we ended up making dinner with the people that I was there and we ended up like having like a, like just a dance. Like we just, for some reason played music and all of a sudden we just all started dancing. There's this video of like, like I think the costume designer was like standing on the stairway. I was, the, it was like one of those moments and I see that video every time and it was, it's, it was one of the, the highlights of the film besides meeting you. But it was just <laughs> one of those moments where I was like, I remember it was like, cause it was such a tough shoot and so many things happened. Oh, dude! I don't even know if we can get into it, can we? No, I, no, I, we're not. We, we, we I, I wanted you to talk about your new movie, but it was just yeah. one of those. Wow, the, the memories we're talking about on this movie, <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> you know, I, over the years, though, like I've become very close with Pavan. We really have, like, we um, because we got in, like, you know, got into a few festivals, and like, um, Pavan took me to um, Atlanta, Orlando, because we got into a Lando film festival. I remember they, that. You know, it was like my first film festival and they flew me across with them and, um, you know, did the kind of like the red carpet kind of stuff over there and introducing the film. And it was really sweet. And over the years, we've developed a, rare, a very good friendship, you know, and he's um, nice. they're, they're both him and Kavita and they've been really nice and sweet. So if they're watching too, hello to Pavan and Kavita. I know. Pavan and Kavita is a good thing. I haven't talked to them since the movie. I really haven't talked to them since the movie. Yeah, so. well, I mean, look, they're um, back in India now, but um, I think sometimes they fly across here because I think um, they have their daughter that actually is in New York, I think, and I think their son might have been moving here as well. This was a, this was a few years ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I can't no, they've been there for four and a half years. How did that happen? What? I know. It's, just, it's, it's gone so quick. And now I'm in um, Williamsburg and I, I, I love, like, look, I love Brooklyn. And here's the thing too. I feel like I'm more productive in New York and I've had a better like run of luck here and I've had yeah I um, feel like you have too because ever since yeah like I feel like I've just um you know like I've got I'm surrounded by good people um okay. and not, not that I wasn't in LA I mean you're Thanks. great <laughs> wow look at the time <laughs> yeah. no I just I'm, I'm more focused here you know um where yeah. LA I can get distracted pretty easy like the weather's so good I want to go out I want to go riding my bike I wanna yeah I can see that hiking here um like I'm kind of forced to I suppose, stay inside and just write and create, do acting class. Um, I've been playing piano the last year to do something completely different. So a, that was me with photography. So, so good for you. Yeah. I, I just wanted to do something completely different, man. And, and the, the piano, I, I won't um, lie, has seriously helped my acting as well, because when you're looking at music notes, especially as a beginner, like um, it's like a new language. And mm -hmm. but when you, when you then can go and pick up a script I feel like you can understand it so much quicker. It's like my acting coach back in Australia years ago used to get me reading Shakespeare sonnets and he'd get me reading sonnets. And he said, if you can understand these, the time you get to contemporary stuff, you're just going to pick it up like that. Yeah. And I, and I attest to that. It's absolutely, you know, he was, he was such a Mr. Miyagi of acting. And I felt like he really gave me the foundation um, back in the day when I was, you know, 21, 22. And um, he would do things like so a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I know. Uh, he, would, he would say like, you know, when you have a shower and you wash your face, like get, get a really good soap, something that you like smelling and just sit there and focus on your breathing for two minutes and just like, you know, get, get that smell in you. And basically what it was, it was trying to just slow me down because I like me, I'm like you where I have a lot of energy and you, you're yeah. bouncing, but especially when you're on camera, like you're moving around too much and it just kind of grounds you and, and sits you in. Oh, okay. I actually, that makes sense. 
Yeah, so it was just things like that. And, um, you know, like he'd give me books to say, like, go read a short history of the world. So I'd read that. He'd just be observing things, like take, like everything. It was just like it's such a different approach to acting. And I feel like all acting teachers too are like, you know, pay attention to the news. Start reading, new, like the newspapers, the radio, whoever listens to radio now, but um, just watching the news. So you yeah, take, it's all about the podcasts. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, taking in the worldly, of worldly events because, you know, if you're ever to play these characters, you need to know the history of where they come from, geography. It's, That's true because the movie I did with you, you played a real person. We, and that was like definitely, and that, I was looking at that the other day. And I'm like, I think it was based in the 40s. I think it was because I think he was born in 19 in the 1920s. Yeah, so I'm trying to remember. It was a period piece, and you have to, um, yeah, I, yeah, you have to kind of understand um, the character. You know, the toughest bit for that was um, like standing up straight and and the um, being on my knees, like kneeing, because you know there's a lot of meditation in that, and it would. Oh yeah, yeah. It would kill my legs, like bending down and do you remember um the contacts how i had to wear contacts yeah because he, he had blue eyes yeah and remember yeah. the dust kept getting in the contacts and they kept ha having to change my contacts and i'm like guys i literally cannot see like oh i remember that it's burning my eyes because the dust kept getting in and all the people were like oh my god like he's so emotional he's connected and i'm like i'm not like, no, I'm just <laughs> my eyes are burning it feels like soap <laughs> see, there's a secret to acting right there <laughs> <laughs> my eyes are killing me. Oh, look at the magic of filmmaking. I love it. Dude, it's so good to catch up. I, I could talk to you all day long, but we're pretty much running out of time. <laughs> you too, bro. Um, oh, no, but we can, next we can always... Go ahead. I'm sorry. We're talking over each other. No, no. I was going to say, next time we have to do it on the drink. Yeah, I really... I, I'm telling you, I'm going to start sending people mimosas. Because I, I, but the weird thing is, is like, I like that idea of mimosas because... Um, you know, you go for Sunday brunch and you just catch up with your friends over mimosas. So it's sort of like a Sunday fun day type thing. Yeah. So that's why the podcast, besides alliteration, is mimosas with Michael. Because that's great. I love that. The idea of catching up with a friend. Um, but here's a funny story. And this is probably the first time I've ever mentioned on this podcast. But when I was, when I decided to do the podcast, it was when I was in, I was actually in Massachusetts doing that, a movie. The one I did with Sam Elliott called The Man Who Killed Hitler and the Bigfoot. And one of the... We, uh, by this, by the t for the end of the shoot, uh, I got really close to everybody, and, and I'm like, I want to create this podcast, but I don't know what to call it. And my and um, everybody's like, well, like, like, what are the things that you enjoy? I was like, I don't know. I really like penis and ice cream. <laughs> 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 and my friends are like, that's an amazing podcast title. And I go, it is. But then you can't. Can you imagine hitting up people going, hey, do you want to be in my podcast called Penis and Ice Cream? <laughs> so I was like, okay. I'll just call it mimosas with Michael. Cause I, I mean, I like the concept of it anyways, but Sounds great. Just, you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm always like a, a jokester. So I was yeah. only half joking except everybody thought it was really funny. So I was like, well shit, now I have to run with it. But then I was like, no, no, I can't reach out to like any guests and be like, you want to be on a show called penis and penis <laughs> and ice cream. Mr. Elliot, do you think you want to be on this penis and ice cream? <laughs> I mean, he probably would. That man, he is one of the, one of the nicest just people I've ever met, like genuinely nice. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I love I that. You found your niche here though, man, as well. Like really, because obviously, you know, you're a very personable dude. And I think this is very, like it just, it flows. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. No, well, you're also easy to talk to. Sorry? You're also easy to talk to. Oh, well, maybe, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even know why I, I try with you. <laughs> is there anything else you want to talk about? Or like, how can people find you? Um, I mean, I, there's not a lot of Leonidas Galopsis out there, so that's pretty. Yeah, cool. exactly. I, th I think I could be the only one, um, but yeah, on, I'm, I mean, I'm on Instagram at uh, Leo Galapsis, and um, I think I yeah, I already mentioned the film, which is like I'm, I'm self promoting. <laughs> no, you have to. This is what podcasts are for. I have you on the show to talk about the movie. Is there anything uh, else you want to talk about the movie? You, I feel like you barely mentioned it. No, well, look, it's a, it's a fun, lighthearted romantic comedy. Um, I think it's a great date movie. Um, and, and it's look, it's a good time. It, and especially in times like this, I think it's, um, it's a good distraction. Yes. Yeah. And what's it called again? A nice girl like you. A nice girl like you. Okay. Go yeah. check out a nice girl like you starring Lena Iscolaptis and Lucy Hale. I yes. I say Lucy Hale first, but I yeah. don't know her. And, I know you. And, um, no, thanks for having me on penis and ice cream. Was, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome. Next time we'll have mimosas. Yeah, mate. Dude. It's so great seeing you, dude. You too. Keep in touch. I'm going to check in with you later and make sure you're good. I want to hear about more of your projects because yeah. I want to have you back on the show so we can talk about more stuff. Mate, I'd love it. Sounds Way good. too many stories that I completely forgot about. <laughs> that I'm have to, I completely forgot about half that stuff. So, 
Yeah, awesome. Oh, my listeners are getting quite an earful. Dude, you are a blessing. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Uh, so give your much. give your mom my best. Um, everybody, please check out Lena Escalaptis and a nice girl like you. Uh, this has been Michael Colon with Mimosas with Michael. You can check us out on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, YouTube, and Instagram TV. We are everywhere now. He's, ev- he's everywhere. We are everywhere. Awesome. All right, homie. Have a great day. Take care, okay? Thank you so much. Take care.